A break-in happened at a vape shop in Framingham around 4.30 a.m. Five teenagers broke the store's window with a rock to get inside. They were in the store for about a minute, stealing vape products and trying to open the cash register. After grabbing the items, they quickly left. The store was locked and had video surveillance that captured everything. While four of the suspects were wearing masks and hoods, making it hard to identify them, the police have the footage and are asking the public to help identify the suspects based on their clothing and any visible features. This gentleman had his store locked up. He had video surveillance. He kind of covered all the bases uh, and provided us with some decent video. The stolen goods are estimated to be worth around $1,000, but this might increase as the store checks its inventory more thoroughly. This time of year, uh, these targets t definitely you know pick up for sure during the holiday season, but this has definitely become something that you know has picked up in the recent past in the greater Metro West area. Unfortunately, I believe four out of the five suspects were masked and they also had hoods on. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to identify them, but at the same time, a couple of them had some pretty distinct clothing on um, that we're hoping that people can identify them and let us know. The police are urging anyone who recognizes the suspects from the video to come forward with information. Around 3.30 a.m., a, a break-in happened at Mr. Vape and Smoke Shop on Lincoln Avenue near Belden in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. At least five individuals were involved. They used a sledgehammer to break the shop's glass to get inside. Once inside, one person went straight to the cash register, likely trying to steal money, while the others grabbed items from the shelves. The store owner expressed frustration, saying that break-ins happen frequently, either every other day or once a month, making it even harder to run his business. Yeah, you know, it discourages a lot to do a business. Like, you know, we're always struggling in this kind of business. Right. And uh, these things happening like every alternate day or like every al once in a month, or, you know, it's, 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 the business is already struggling and, you know, these robberies are like crazy. After the robbery, the group left the scene in a vehicle. No arrests have been made yet. Police detectives from Area 3 are investigating and looking into whether this break-in is connected to other robberies that happened in different areas the same night. A group of thieves was involved in the robbery of five jewelry stores in different towns in Alicante, Spain. They used weapons to intimidate those present and stole loot worth a total of 280,000 euros. Fortunately, the Civil Guard arrested this group, putting an end to their crime spree. An armed robbery took place at a Walgreens pharmacy on Charlestown Road in New Albany just after 8 p.m. on a Monday night. The robber entered the store with most of his face covered and spent some time wandering the aisles, seemingly checking out who was in the store. During this time, he stole a few bottles of vitamins. He approached the pharmacy and made, made some demands. Um, he obtained an, an undisclosed amount of uh, oxycodone and then exited the store rather quickly. He then approached the pharmacy counter, demanded oxycodone, and indicated that he had a weapon. After getting an undisclosed amount of the substances, he quickly left the store. Another surveillance camera captured him running out of the building. And he had something across his face, which they described as a, possibly a fake red beard. The unusual thing about this guy is he's very tall. Um, they described him as being as about 6'3". Um, and from the video footage, he looks like he's kind of stocky, not not overweight, but just kind of stocky. Anytime someone comes in with, with demands like that, um, it's, it's frightening to the public. Um, they did indicate he was calm. 
So I think that that kind of soothed them. Fortunately, the robber was arrested later. A jewelry store in Brampton, Ontario, was the scene of a bold smash-and-grab robbery, drawing significant attention due to a video circulating online showing the incident. The robbery took place around 6.30 p.m. when three suspects, their identities hidden by disguises, arrived at the store. Armed with hammers, they smashed the display cases and demanded money and jewelry from the staff. They took a significant amount of merchandise from the shattered cases. Following the incident, the police were notified, and one suspect was charged with the robbery. And the security guard here. Authorities are continuing their investigation to catch the remaining suspects. This daring robbery has heightened concerns about security in retail settings, especially those selling high-value items like jewelry. Just after midnight, a break-in occurred at a vape shop called Switch to Vapes on Louis Drive. The group involved, believed to be teenagers between 14 and 16 years old, smashed their way into the shop and stole dozens of items. They specifically targeted a storage unit window that didn't have bars, unlike the main store windows, allowing them to reach in and grab items. Jason Ladder, the shop owner, reviewed the surveillance footage and found the incident both shocking and frustrating. Pretty shocking and annoying as heck because uh, that's a seventeen hundred dollar window to reinstall, right? Plus all the time and labor to board it up and do all that stuff, right? The windows to the store all have bars on them. Uh, the storage unit does not, and uh, um, so they smash the window to be able to reach in and grab stuff out of there. He pointed out the financial burden, including the one thousand seven hundred dollars cost of replacing the window and the time and effort needed to board up and repair the damage. The RCMP responded when the alarm went off, but couldn't locate the suspects. It sounds like they're hitting other businesses too, because uh, I've seen a post this morning from Deep Street in Kelowna where that was hit, and the, and the footage from that looked uh, like same, the same group. Ladder noted that other businesses seemed to be targeted by the same group of teenagers. Three of the teenagers were later arrested, but the others are still on the run. Two separate pharmacies in South Houston were robbed just days apart. On April 22, 2019, four unknown males entered Maxer Pharmacy at 1046 Hercules and leaped over the counter, demanding prescription medicine and money. <laughs> Where the safe at? 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 Where the safe they filled bags with prescription drugs and emptied the cash registers before fleeing the scene. No, where you going? Where you 
On May 6, 2019, the same four suspects targeted Cunningham Pharmacy at 7101 Lawndale, where they again demanded money and prescription medicine. They filled plastic bags with the medicine using the same method as in the first robbery. Fortunately, the police managed to arrest all four suspects, bringing their crime spree to an end. Complete Vapors in Unity Township, which opened its doors for the first time on New Year's Eve, suffered two break-ins within weeks of its grand opening. The first break-in occurred on January 5th, just six days after the shop's opening. During this incident, the front door was smashed, and thousands of dollars worth of products were stolen. It was shock, honestly. It was, I was just shocked. A few days later, the store was targeted again, with burglars breaking a window and stealing the same types of products as before. Dylan Ritko, one of the store's owners, expressed shock and dismay over the repeated break-ins. State police and everyone we talked to were severely surprised that we had been having this problem. Despite having six locations across the region and investing heavily in renovating the Unity Township store, these incidents left the premises with plywood covering much of the walls, creating a less inviting atmosphere and raising concerns about employee safety. That we have so much plywood on the walls, it just... It, it looks bad, and uh, we don't want our employees to feel scared to work there. Ritko emphasized that the stolen products were not his primary concern. Rather, the significant damage and the time needed to repair the store were more troubling. It's about uh, six weeks that we're going to have to wait in all for all of the glass to be delivered, and we're in about $6,000 in damages. We all wish them the best. We hope this is a pivotal time in their life that they get stuff figured out and that they choose the right path from here on. State police later identified and charged two juveniles with the crimes. These individuals were staying at a nearby Adelphoi home for at-risk teens and children and admitted to the break-ins. Four suspects rushed into a Walnut Creek Apple store and quickly grabbed $30,000 worth of merchandise. The group was inside the store for only 20 seconds before jumping into a black Mercedes SUV and fleeing the scene. Police managed to obtain the vehicle's license plate number and have already made two arrests. In Henry County, the Inn to Vape shop in Stockbridge was broken into overnight, with the entire incident caught on camera. The thief, described as unsophisticated, didn't bring any tools for the burglary. Instead, he used a concrete post to smash through the window and enter the shop. Once inside, he spent less than five minutes in the small vape shop, and his actions were fully captured by the store's surveillance cameras. The shop's alarm went off during the break-in, leading the owner, Cassandra Hill, to receive an early morning call. At first, she thought the alarm might have been triggered by the ongoing thunderstorm and doubted it was a real break-in. Honestly, I didn't think it was a true break-in at first because we were in the midst of the thunderstorm. The thief specifically targeted mod equipment, which is often used by customers to quit smoking or enhance their vaping experience. Went around the counter and stole our mod equipment. A lot of customers will use this method to stop smoking um, or, you know, just enjoy the um, experience. Right. You could find anything on the street. You know, these, these youth these days, they're not really too particular on what they're selling. I guess if they can get a couple of dollars, it doesn't really matter. At one point, he attempted to steal the store's television, but had to abandon it as the police were on their way. Despite this being the first burglary in two years, Cassandra Hill remains committed to serving her community, though she admitted feeling some discouragement due to the break-in. Unfortunately, happens to be us this time. It hasn't always been easy, you know, based on our location, things of that nature, but we put the shop here uh, to help our people. It's a little discouraging, but you know, we're not giving up. She is determined not to give up and suspects that the stolen items might be sold locally at a significant discount, possibly at neighborhood corners or beauty parlors. She urges the public not to buy these items, as doing so would only encourage more crimes like this. Shortly after 9.45 p.m., a group of suspects attempted to burglarize HSD Engineering on Solano Way in Concord. They used a car with a stolen license plate to break into the business, but were thwarted by a forklift blocking the door, preventing full access. Luckily, the only thing that saved them from completely demolishing through our building was our 
Recently purchased forklift. It also has doubled as the new way to open and close the door. Decided to trash their car, my door, and run away. I suspect they were looking for a marijuana grow house. Despite causing significant damage to the roll-up door, they did not steal anything from HSD Engineering. In response, Tyler Hagen and his business partner managed repair costs estimated at over $2,000 out of pocket. Because that forklift was in the way, um, they would have been inside this building and probably taken out a customer job, you know belongs to the lab. They also offered a $500 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the suspects, hoping it would deter future crimes and help capture those responsible. Not cheap, but we're gonna just take it out of pocket. In a related incident less than two miles away, surveillance footage captured just before 9.45 p.m. showed the same group of suspects using a car to ram into a roll-up door at Micro Measurements and Pacific Instruments Spa on Pike Lane. Although they looked inside, they left without taking anything. Both Hagan and Lewandowski filed reports with local authorities, urging the public to provide any information that could help identify the suspects. Send a message and just teach other people to not do this type of stuff. It's not beneficial to anybody. Nobody won. Their goal was not only to solve the case, but also to discourage similar acts, emphasizing the harm caused to the community by such criminal activities. The Lake Worth Police Department is urgently searching for two suspects involved in a violent armed robbery at a Walgreens pharmacy in Lake Worth, Texas. The incident took place just before 3.40 a.m. on Sunday, October 15th. Surveillance footage shows the two suspects scoping out the pharmacy for about 15 minutes before the robbery. Armed with a weapon, the first suspect immediately went to the pharmacy area upon entering. He forcefully grabbed the pharmacist by the head and made her unlock a secured storage area to remove controlled substances. He then directed her to the back office under threat. The second suspect, wielding a rod-style taser, attacked the front desk clerk. He forced her to the ground, used the taser on her, and then dragged her to the back office where the pharmacist was being held. There, both suspects coerced the pharmacist to open the safe in the back office. They stole approximately $5,000 in cash, placing it in a trash can before escaping in a black Chevrolet Impala. A 911 call was made shortly before 3.50 a.m., and police quickly responded to the scene. The front desk clerk was seriously injured during the ordeal and had to undergo surgery at a local hospital, where she is currently recovering. The pharmacist, though not physically harmed, was involved in the incident. The Lake Worth Police Department continues to investigate investigate and is appealing for any information on the identities and whereabouts of the suspects. A Houston woman named LaToya White is accused of committing a series of thefts from cars parked at cemeteries and dog parks, targeting grieving families. Investigators were looking for a woman who had stolen a grieving mother's purse when another law enforcement agency recognized the suspect, believing they were searching for the same person. By Tuesday, LaToya White was in jail, facing five charges related to these thefts, and is also considered the prime suspect in eight additional cases. One particular incident that caught attention involved White allegedly stealing a purse from Gabriel Mack's car while Mack was cleaning her late daughter's grave. This theft happened at a cemetery, and shortly after, White was reportedly seen using a stolen credit card at a Walgreens. Surveillance footage captured White on different occasions, wearing distinctive outfits, including a pink outfit and a green hat, as she used stolen credit cards. White is also charged with similar thefts at Memorial Oak Cemetery and a nearby dog park in West Houston. I think when people steal like this, they think about themselves and they don't think about what their victims are dealing with in their own personal lives. During a court hearing, due to concerns about public safety and the fact that White was out on bond for other charges, her bail was set at $25,000. I am going to decline personal bonds because I do have public safety concerns given the fact that you're already out on two bonds and now you've picked up two new similar charges. Investigators believe White passed Gabriel Mack's ID to another woman, who then withdrew money from Mack's bank account. This second woman is now also wanted by authorities. Gabriel Mack expressed relief upon hearing of White's arrest. As of the last update, LaToya White is facing multiple criminal charges related to thefts from vehicles in cemeteries and parks, with ongoing investigations into other cases. Nearly a year after a series of high-profile smash-and-grab robberies in Southern California, including 
A notable incident at the Nordstrom in Westfield Topanga Mall, the individuals involved have been sentenced. The robberies, which were carried out in a flash mob style, took place last summer and involved multiple people coordinating attacks on high-end retail stores. The footage of these crimes was widely viewed as disturbing, leading to a strong response from law enforcement and the public. California Attorney General Rob Bonta emphasized the shock and unacceptability of these events, particularly noting the potential danger to families and innocent shoppers who were present. I think anyone who saw that footage can agree it was uh, disturbing and shocking and unacceptable. And it's, it's hard to watch, much less imagine uh, what it would have been like if you, yeah, your children, your loved ones, family members uh, were innocently shopping uh, during those moments. Five men who were directly involved in the Nordstrom robbery at Westfield Topanga Mall pleaded guilty and received sentences ranging from four to ten years in state prison. Their guilty pleas were specifically related to this incident. Additionally, three other men pleaded guilty to participating in similar robberies at high-end retail stores across Los Angeles, Orange, and Riverside counties between May and August of the previous year. The series of robberies resulted in significant financial loss, with affected businesses reporting over $1.7 million in damages. Two robbers used a sledgehammer to smash display cases at a jewelry store in West Shore Plaza Mall during a bold robbery late Wednesday morning. The incident took place just before noon at Prince Jewelry. Surveillance footage shows one robber breaking the display cases with a sledgehammer, while another is seen in the background. The robbers also had pepper spray, which they used to threaten employees and mall security, according to Tampa police. Fortunately, no one was injured. The robbers, with their faces covered, stole several pieces of jewelry and fled in a silver Chevy Malibu parked near Dick's Sporting Goods. The car is believed to be a newer model with a sunroof and tinted windows. Police are urging anyone with information about the robbers to contact them. In East Oakland, a major burglary took place over the weekend, affecting 16 businesses in an office building on Collins Drive, located behind a Denny's restaurant that recently closed due to crime concerns. And you can see the fresh cut marks on here, the fresh... The burglars forcefully entered the building by kicking down doors, causing extensive damage. Look at this, Doc. Look at this. Right here, you can see where they kicked it in. They kicked this one open. And this tenant just moved in here. You can see her box that she's just moving in. So you think she's going to want to stay here with this happening to her? I don't think so. The affected businesses ranged from construction companies to a barber shop and nonprofit organizations. The scene was left in disarray, with broken glass and significant destruction that business owners and workers were seen cleaning up. Born and raised in Oakland, it's more a disappointment because seeing how the city used to be and now you have to stay on alert. You gotta remain vigilant. A lot of loyal, good people come and say support local businesses, but how long can it last when you have constant crime? The thieves gained access to the property around 2.30 a.m. on Saturday by cutting through two layers of fencing. Surveillance footage shows them breaking into a new podcast studio inside a shipping container on the site where they stole valuable equipment such as computers, laptops, microphones, and cameras. And we have a, 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 a podcast unit where we teach children how to use technology and where you can speak your voice. They use a crowbar right here. They busted the window here and they stole all our, our computer tops, laptops, mics, cameras. The burglars then continued their spree inside the main office building, breaking nearly every door and stealing items like cash, tools, laptops, and other valuables from the ransacked businesses. As small minority businesses, when things happen like this, it's just a big setback. And it can have you, it can have some people shut their doors down. We live in a place where, you know, people just feel like they can get away with crime and, 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 and you know, it's sad, you know, real sad. Um, they took my laptop with my, uh, all my business information on it, bank accounts, everything. So now I have to call the bank and cancel everything. This incident has hit the local business community hard, particularly as most of the affected businesses are minority owned. The ongoing crime and losses have left owners feeling demoralized and worried about the future of their businesses in the area. 
we need help to keep this city alive. Because if they leave, what's gonna happen with this area? If they leave, what's gonna happen? Look what's right there. The only reason why it's not down here is because of the activity, the positive activity we have out here and the blocks that was placed here to stop them from blocking and parking and on the sidewalk. If this, if we weren't here, this it'd be a wrap, da. It would be a wrap. I'm a son of Oakland, da. I feel like leaving. I feel so down right now. Although the police responded several hours after the initial 911 call, collected evidence, and took reports, business owners have little hope that the culprits will be caught. Two men entered a gas station while it was closed and began stealing cigarettes. When security asked them to leave, one of the men fled immediately, while the other continued to fill his bag with cigarettes, seemingly unconcerned. Live eye security team here. Cops are on the way. Could you please leave the store? Could you please leave the store? He eventually left with his loot. Fortunately, both were later arrested, and it was discovered that this wasn't their first time stealing. On Tuesday, March 1, 2016, around 4.30 a.m., about 10 suspects broke into a weapon store located in the 11,800 block of South Wilchrist Drive in Houston, Texas. They used a chain attached to a pickup truck to pull off the front doors of the business. Once inside, the suspects ransacked the store, causing extensive damage. They used a hammer to break the glass cases that held weapons and took several rifles off the rack. The suspects left the store with the weapons and exchanged vehicles about one block away. They fled from the second location in an unknown direction, possibly in a late model Chevrolet Traverse SUV. The Houston Police Department managed to arrest six suspects, while the others have yet to be caught. In Mobile, Alabama, two individuals dressed in dark clothing committed a burglary at a family-owned pharmacy on Hillcrest Road over the weekend, stealing thousands of dollars worth of substances. The pharmacy had only been open for about a month when the crime occurred. The burglars broke through a window to gain entry and were inside for only two minutes, during which they filled a trash can with controlled substances, particularly opioid-based substances like hydrocodone and morphine. The burglars caused approximately $1,000 in damages to the pharmacy and stole about $6,000 worth of substances, though the street value of the stolen pills could be around $50,000. Surveillance footage captured them ransacking the pharmacy and opening the safe to access the substances. However, the suspects were wearing hoodies, gloves, and masks, making it difficult for police to identify them. Very methodical. Um, I heard somebody say that looked at the film, you know, it was almost Mission Impossible kind of thing. The owner, Donald D. Hart, expressed deep concern not only for the financial loss, but also for the fact that dangerous substances were now on the street, which he finds more distressing than the burglary itself. Usually people are angry because somebody did something against them, uh, was stolen, but in this case there's drugs on the street and they got them from me. And I, I hate that worse than anything. After a thorough investigation, the police managed to arrest the suspects involved. The Houston Police Department's Robbery Division is asking for the public's help in identifying three suspects involved in a series of robberies at smoke shops in Houston and Harris County. These crimes occurred on February 7, 2023, with four robberies taking place after midnight. In each case, the suspects entered the smoke shops, displayed weapons, and demanded cash from the registers. They also filled backpacks with merchandise from the stores. During several of the robberies, the suspects physically assaulted employees using weapons and fists. Okay, 
everything in my hand. I'm not playing. I know you, you know, you're coming in number two. The Houston Police Department is urging anyone with information about these incidents to contact Crime Stoppers of Houston directly. On April 21, 2023, officers responded to a grocery store after receiving reports that a man was shoplifting and acting aggressively toward employees. He's in there fighting with the security guard. And from here to here, back over there, I'm not sure where he is. There he is. There he is. That's I don't want to stop. It ain't gonna stop okay. nothing. Yeah. I don't have nothing. Okay, that's fine. He broke my watch. All right, man. we'll get no. to it. No, you're gonna stay here is what you're gonna do. I don't have to stay here yes, because do. I don't have anything. You're gonna stay here. I don't have to stay here. Stop. I'm in the store. Stop. Or you're gonna get tased. All right. You can't tase me. Stop. Man, hell no. He just broke my watch. You're gonna get dealt with in a second. How am I going for that? You're gonna go in handcuffs in a second. Stop. You can't handcuff me. I will put you in handcuffs in a second. You Stop. You can't handcuff me because I don't have anything. Okay. That's not the problem here right now. What's the problem? What do we got me taking? I don't know what's going on here. So you so, so you don't know what's going on? He just grabbed me and broke my watch? Chill out. Hell no. Come here. He's gonna pay for my watch. Okay, we'll deal with that. Call y'all, call y'all GM. <clears throat> Stop. I'm not stopping nothing. Call the GM. <clears throat> call the GM. Okay, listen. You're gonna stop now. Bro, you can't grab, bro. I am. I don't have anything. You can't grab me, bro. You're gonna get tased. You can't tase me. I will tase you. If you tase me, I'm going to sue stop. you. Tase me. Go ahead and tase me. Tase me. Go ahead and tase me. Make sure you 16, have him step it up. Tase me. Oh, my God. You the watch. 16, I didn't hear that. What's step up? <clears throat> Someone, 16, are you copying me? Can you have him step it up? He ain't stop. gonna step it up like you can't grab me. Stop. Bro, stop. Bro, stop. I don't have nothing. You're gonna you get can't. tased. You can't tase me because I don't have nothing. Okay. Stop. You're going off of something that he said. And I'm trying to figure it out. What the f*** are you talking about on gas? Stop walking away from man, me. Man, bro, hell no. He just broke my thousand dollar watch. And we'll get to that. Man, you know y'all gonna get to he just broke my watch. And tased me. Somebody pull y'all phones out so he can tase me. You're on video here. Where is it? Right here. Stop Where is it? it? You can't touch me. I can. No, you can't. Stop. Stop. I have anything in the store. Get out of here. They gonna say yeah. Break my mother. What? Listen, you're no, not able to pay them all. Okay, what? that's fine. Stop it. You can't tase me or any of that. The man continued to act aggressively, prompting the officers to use force and handcuff him. These are grab me. Let me go. What the? Let me go. I don't have anything. They can't grab me, man. I don't have anything. Sorry, I said the cell band inside the doors. On the left side. On the left side. And let me go. If you can bring in a hobble. Y'all can bring in whoever y'all want to. 
Yeah, let him get me. Come on. I can go out to the cop. Bro, stop grabbing me. Oh, God. Y'all can pay for my. Bro, I don't. Put your hands on your back. Put your hands behind your back. Y'all can't do that to me because I don't have anything. After a struggle, the officers managed to handcuff him and he was taken to jail. The suspect, later identified as Myron, was arrested for retail theft and resisting arrest. Two masked individuals entered a gas station and one of them jumped the counter, compelling the employee to open the cash register. Meanwhile, the other suspect stole cigarettes. After grabbing what they wanted, they fled the scene. Unfortunately, these individuals have not yet been caught and remain at large. This girl is in for a big surprise when she tries to leave the store without paying for her repaired phone. The man asks her to return the phone so he can remove the screen and let her go. Instead, the girl calls her mom and refuses to hand over the phone. She then tries to negotiate the price. I'm going to call the cops if that's the case. I do. Come on, you're going to take me to jail. You're going to give me my screen back or you're going to go home. Which one is it? Because he's not because his eyes, his face, his face, and I'm probably running home. He's taking my screen. All you have to do is give me the phone, let me take the screen yes. off, and I'll let you go. He'll be charging me 90. Hmm? He'll be charging me 90. Give me the phone back. Huh? Give me the phone back. Give me the phone, I'm going to take the screen off and put your old screen back on and let you go. I'm at the one down the way. The man calls the police. After some time, her mom arrives and immediately questions why he tried to charge so much. A customer tried to run away with a, with a phone screen that I uh, repaired for her. No, I did not try to run away. Stop I got you on video. Now she's threatening me to get somebody over here to shoot me. Yeah. And all I told her is to give me the phone, let me take the screen off, and I'll let her go. But she's getting right, people up, sent over here so they can shoot up the store. Now, what the f is going on? She tried to run out of the store. Okay. How and I told her, I told her, give me the phone, I'll take the screen off, and we can be done with this. But she wasn't having it. How much is the phone cost? The screen is 125 It could be you want to charge me $75 for my device Give me the phone back 
second I can take the screen off and we're done. Just let him take the screen off. Uh-huh. You just go there. You just go around the corner and get a seat. Come on, let's go. Uh-huh. Get him the Meanwhile, the man begins working on removing the screen while the mom and daughter continue to yell. How would you even try to slip to a place that's harder than hundreds of some other Mom, I used to not tell me that when I dropped my phone off. Yes, I did. No, you did not. You ought to have me f***ing dropped off some crazy s***ing shit because I'm thinking this motherfucker is something here. Mom, I'm going to get you to my She ran, honey, your daughter is a liar. What happened? Your intention was to run out here with the phone. That's why your friend had the door open and I told you to have her close it. I knew you were doing this. Honey, I've been doing this for 30 years. You have a problem? You don't want you to hear the truth. I told her your phone is not I told her your battery's fat. Your earpiece Heavy girls are right out of here with some phone being fixed. Heavy girls, I know. So what did you do? You know what you know. Stop lying. Fair, fair. Just hit the phone. I just ran out of here yesterday with her phone. Okay, so what you thought? You saw Red Coat? That's why she's on Tic Tac too. She ran away two months ago. She did that. That's why she tried to do it too. It's surprising how angry some people get when they're stopped from committing a crime. This man was incredibly kind to offer her an option that wouldn't ruin her future. On October 1, 2023, in Florida, officers received a call from the lead manager at a local Dollar General reporting that the business was short over $10,000. After reviewing the surveillance footage, it was discovered that one of the employees was creating fraudulent transactions, issuing herself cash refunds, and pocketing thousands of dollars. She even allowed her boyfriend's grandmother to fill her cart with over $800 worth of items without paying and walk out of the store. Um, so just give me a basis of what happened, what's going on. Well, I was watching some video footage on her, and she's been stealing from my store, one of my employees. And uh, my loss prevention person is here right now, I'm going over all of that with her. And um, Okay, so she's currently like semi-detained? Yeah, she's in the break room. Okay. Or in the office with him. Right okay. Yeah. Alright, um, so what, what do you have video footage of? Uh, her doing fraudulent refunds and a family member, um, she is ringing, ringing but not ringing her out with three overflowing shopping carts and merchandise. She's sliding. For for herself or somebody else? Uh, for her grandmother. Oh, for her grandmother, okay. Her boyfriend's grandmother. So. Okay. The officer then approached the employee. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Carlo. Deputy Troop? I'm going to read your AP manager. Okay. So i got one of our employees here. She, I'm just finished a conversation with her. Um, we've been doing refund fraud, and she's been giving away merchandise to her boyfriend's grandmother. The okay. most recent event happened two days ago uh, where she allowed her boyfriend's grandmother to walk out of the store with approximately, it was like $800 in three different time. It was 300 300 200 roughly. Okay. Because she didn't bring all the merchandise up and allowed her to walk out without paying for it. Um, I can show you video. How old are you? I'm 22. This is a statement she wrote for me regarding okay. all that. This is the breakdown of the merchandise that we've agreed on. Okay. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll make copies for you. I got copies of transactions already printed for you Sweet. as well. Yeah. Um, and then you have the video footage, of course. I haven't burnt that yet. Okay. Um, but um, I wanted to show, I'll show you. I got you. But yeah, um, I'll definitely need copies. Um, These are your copies. I'll get a 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Of course, stuff like this I'll and then that. the transactions and yeah, transactions things that you found out. Okay. Um. So this is the refund fraud here. Nine. And she's been very cooperative. She's been very honest with me. Told me everything that is everything here. So she has been cooperative. You take me. Can I at least call my mom to tell her she has my kid? Yeah. I I can do that for you. I can do that for you. She kept fake crying, shifting from heavy sobs to normal talking, and then back to heavy crying, which was quite odd. It's hard to understand why someone would do something that would lead to such embarrassment. For that whole buggy there, she paid $5.18 for that. This is one of three trips in that night. In one night? Mm-hmm. And I was on the 29th? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the solid and handcuff you in the front. Okay. But as of right now, <laughs> 6, 7, 15, 10, 15, white female. Is it okay if I call my mom? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Is it in the it's break room? Can you get it? Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. You're good. Is it in your purse or is it? Ten fifteen. White female. Have pumpkins on it. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Okay.
times are tough right now. Yeah. And I thought it would just be yeah. So as far as like the merchandise and then the uh, the money you were, uh, you refunded to yourself. Yes. Um, were you doing that for yourself or for family? Money I did for myself. The other stuff I did for her. Like the merchandise. Yes. Okay. The woman was charged with felony grand theft and sentenced to one year of probation. Do you think she learned her lesson? On March 19, 2024, police in Lacey, Washington were called to the Target store regarding a shoplifting incident in progress. Officers were standing outside the store when a 19-year-old woman and a 23-year-old man, along with their baby, exited the store with over $400 worth of unpaid merchandise. Hello. Hey, you two. Yeah. We're here to go. People probably sticks about with them. Hey, ma'am. How's it going? Good. Can you guys tell us what's going on today? Okay, this guy's got some questions for you, okay? Yeah. Uh, so you can be honest, I have everything okay. on camera. Like, if everything you put in the stroller, the okay. Legos on the bottom. So I want to be honest and tell us okay. what's going on. Yeah. What was it? I wasn't on anything. Okay. I just want to know, like, why are you yeah. doing it? Like, what's going on? Just, um, just the one thing. It's not a one-time thing I've seen you guys here before. Like, there's no need to lie. Like, I have cameras. I've, I've, been I've seen both of you here before. Okay. Well, okay, sir. Have a seat. Have a seat on the curb. Though. I just. I, it, 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 Let's just, bring the baby over here so we don't get hit by a car. I promise. It was it. All right, my partner. I'll talk to you, and I want to talk to you, ma'am. So, obviously, no, hey, 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 hey. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, you're gonna sit down. Okay. You're gonna go into handcuffs. Okay. Yeah, let's just do that. We're not playing any games. We want you to ask professional in front of yeah. your child. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we're going to do anything, man. Okay, well, we're going to make sure of that. Well, when we tell you to sit down yeah. and you jump up like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, you're worried. I'm, 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 I'm good. All right, now sit back down, please. Okay. Let's actually take him. Uh, we can go in your office. Take him. Yeah. I'll tell you what, so now everybody has to see your business. We can get the baby out of the sun. Okay. Let's just go back into the office. Okay. It's a little one thing. Eduardo? Yeah. Eduardo, just let you know this is all being audio and video recorded, okay? Really? You want to follow them? One of the officers then proceeded to review the CCTV footage of the theft. And should be three boxes, two in the stroller, another one on the bottom. Okay. She paid for like a couple of things of food, and then he puts the one on the bottom, and they walk out together. I think she had some random. Other did she select any of the Legos, or did he select them? I think it's. Or is she with him? Yeah, they're together the whole time. But she knows they're in there. Yeah, and she's okay. there together when the, she's the one who puts them in the shore. And she put them in there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they both. So he he selects them all though. That's a double check. I think he might have one. Two. So he selects them together, and then she helps conceal. Yeah. Because the baby's in here at the time, and then they pull the baby out, and other ones are in there. Okay. And I believe she has just some other stuff in here. I think it's like, I think it's like random food stuff. That she did not pay for? Yeah. Because in this one. Okay, so they're already in there at this point. Yeah. Uh, and then this is where... They were given the opportunity to have a relative come and pick up the baby. So, um, you don't have to call CPS. Is there a friend or family who can pick up the child? Yeah. I'll get that information for me in a second. I don't have a cell phone number, but he's got his. You don't know the number off the top of your head? I don't. Can I stay right there? Stay back here. I'm against the wall. Oh. This way. Do you have your cell phone? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 
Yeah, someone's gonna have to come pick she up. She needs. Your number. Uh, I'll just put my face in there. There you go. We're just getting the number for somebody to pick up the baby. Perfect. Are we gonna go up here? Who am I looking at? Um, can you go to the just go to the text? Click on that top one. Call that one, please. Who's this? Uh, that's his brother. Brother, where's he at? He should be at in Shelton. Okay. But just call. Omar. Yeah. Um, can you call your mom or your dad or Ceci? Cause um, we're over here at Target and Lacey, and I'm pretty sure me and Junior are getting arrested. Why? I'll talk about it that some other time. Uh, can you call somebody though? Because can I call your? Can we call your mother from here? It's not my mom, and she doesn't speak English. Do you speak Spanish? Um, barely. Not enough to explain to her. Me? Is that dad? Huh? Is that the dad? Yeah. Can he explain it? Yeah. I mean, you can ask him too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, what do you want him to do then? Let's go. Hello? Do you want me to just call your mom then? I don't know what to do. Listen, she can't go over to the National Museum. Oh, I can't drive over there. I don't have a license. Okay, but I don't have nobody else to call. Can I call your dog? He's right there. He's holding yeah, the phone. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, um, what's going on? Uh, what's your name again? Caitlin. Caitlin and her boyfriend, husband, are under arrest for theft. And uh, we don't want to put the child with Child Protective Services if we don't have to. So we're trying to get a hold of somebody to come pick up the child. A search of their items revealed that they were stealing some expensive toys along with other merchandise. So just tomatoes in the purse? Yeah, tomatoes and cheese yeah. in the purse, yeah. Okay, and these two were in the purse and then... But this one and this one... And that one's were in the stroller. Yeah, I just got them out. Um, oh, you want me to step? I'll give you the them out now? Yeah, we got to wait a little bit, so... Like, um, yeah, just put it on the receiver. We gotta wait a little bit anyway, okay. so you got time. This one's gotta be pretty spendy. This is 170. Finally, both were arrested and taken to the Nisqually Correction Center. They were charged with misdemeanor shoplifting, and their cases are still open. We've always heard stories of thieves committing outrageous acts to deprive honest people of their money or goods for personal gain. In this case, this thief became very bold with their crime. Here's how it worked. A local mechanic employed by a major mechanic company thought it would be a good idea to steal customers' credit card information from his workplace. The thief would take the card information, create a fake invoice, process the payment, and then take cash from the register. Well, what's your emergency? What exactly happened? So I had, a, had an employee here took over $13,500 uh, in cash from the store. Uh, we have uh, you know, identified who it is and you know, want to make a police report. Okay, is that person uh, working right now? Yes. Hey, hey, how you What's going on, man? First thing, officer Chamber. Nice to meet you, Oh, what's going on? Oh, so you're Chris. Right. Yeah, they told me you weren't here. So. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. I don't want to um, let him know. Oh, him. yeah, no, we had an office up here. Okay. But, um, so cash, we're, we're a larger corporation. Uh -huh. so we have uh, stores all over the country. So cash management calls me, I'm a district manager. They call me and say, hey, you know, we got a lot of distribution. Okay. Call okay. Call okay. Call okay. Call when officers arrived, they immediately met with the district manager, who reported that there had been over 50 chargebacks from customers in just one month. Due to this claim, they decided to launch an internal investigation, monitoring all employees responsible for financial transactions. So I went through some data, and I looked at different work orders, saw that they were only using one specific part, and you can figure it out, use your mind. Uh, you're basically 
run the money, like use someone's car, yes. and pay for all the tickets on one car. The manager explained to the officers exactly how the scheme worked. The mechanic would take all the credit card information, create a single large invoice, mark it as paid, and then take the cash from the register. When confronted about his theft, the perpetrator panicked and pulled out nearly $133,000 in cash, handing it over to the manager. The officers then approached the employee. Of your choice before you make any statements and during any questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, you are entitled to the presence and representation of a court-appointed lawyer before you make any statement and during any questioning. If at any time during the interview you do not wish to answer any questions, you are privileged to remain silent. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, how long have you been working here, man? At this business? I've been like less than a year. Less than a year here? Did you work at Tire Kingdom before this or anything like that? No. no? Where were you working before this? Landscaping. Landscaping? Okay. So you've been working here less than a year, okay? Um, during that time, have you been working have you been working with a register or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah? Do you do a lot of payments? You take all the payments that come in or how does no, that work? Not all of them, but I, I'm mostly the one that does it. Okay. And you work what you, <laughs> is there a certain time frame you work? When you come in, all do you day. have like a specific schedule? No, all day, every day. All day, every day? Okay. Yeah. Even weekends? Yeah. Okay. And then, so during the time that you're working, you have access to the register, cards, and all that good stuff? Yeah? What do you mean? Like, what? like do you have access to like cards and register and take payments and everything like yeah. that? Okay. All right. Um, do you kind of understand why we're here? Do you have a kind of like a idea on why we're here right yeah. now? Okay. Why do you think we're here? Taking money from the drawer. Okay. You took physical cash or was it something that along the line of cards or what, what, what was no, it? Physical cash. Okay. Alright. So just um no, you might be Yeah, no, you're good. It's just to so just explain to us, I mean we're sitting here talking, honesty is the best key. I appreciate that. That's never to close the door. Huh? You wanna close the door? Yeah. 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 Yeah, no problem. We'll talk to him. The officers continued questioning him. It helped you with it. No, just me. Just you? Okay. Um, when's the last time you did it? Uh, like two months ago. Two, two months, months ago? So like ten. Now on uh, average, on a seven day work week, how many times a week were you doing this? It would either be bi or weekly or a month. Um, okay, one time, two times a month? Or what I'm, uh, you had to estimate. Just like two times a month, bi-weekly. Yeah. Okay. I'm not... So every other week? Yeah. And how much in total would you do each transaction? Either be a small amount or a big amount. It just depends on the... And what's the biggest amount you've done? Um, I think like nine to a thousand. Okay. And what's the smallest amount you've ever done? Maybe like a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks? Okay. And um, where did you keep the cash? I kept the stash. Okay. At your home? Yeah, the house. Okay. And how much in total? Um, they told me 14, but I'm not 100% sure. How much did you get back? I gave back everything I had. You gave back everything you had? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you say how long you've been working because you say you don't know exactly when it started, right? Eventually, the man was taken into custody and spent a night in the local jail where he was given a few days to reflect on his actions. He was charged with grand theft and scheme to defraud. A few days later, state prosecutors decided to drop all charges against him, presumably because he paid back the money before his arrest. It appears that he was able to buy his way out of a crime. Imagine working at a store where you're supposed to help customers, but instead, you end up stealing cash right from under their noses. That's exactly what happened at this Burlington Coat Factory, where an employee managed to steal thousands of dollars during every shift. Here's how the scheme worked. The employee would arrive for her shift and perform her daily duties as a cashier. However, instead of putting the cash in the register after each transaction, she would set the money aside and collect it all at the end of the day. Show me 10 12 of the homeowner. I'm going to take the traffic stop. I'm Julianne. Hi, Hi, Julianne. I'm Officer Colazzo. Nice to meet you. Thanks for so coming. So what's going on? Yeah, so we have uh, an employee. Okay. Um, she, she was a cashier, so over right. four shifts, starting um, on the 23rd of December. The last one was on the 1st. Okay. She was a cashier. Uh, ring up ring up customers. Customers would hand her the cash. She'd take the cash, put it on the side of the register, finish the transaction. She'd take she the cash. Here? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm shocked that she's still here. 
When the officer arrived, the manager explained how much the employee had been stealing. She was shocked that the employee was still at work and actively stealing, especially since she had previously received a warning after her register came up short. That's good, at least. Yeah, no issues, um, and um, I've got video clips. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't remember, do you guys have the ability to send the link through Axon? Uh, no, we don't use Axon. Yeah, that would be the sheriff's office. But yeah, we don't we don't okay. use Axon. Okay. Yes, yeah, so and I would have to get you. Yeah. So our systems, like we're we're getting away from um, like discs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I think so the it's sheriff's like... office has, or not the sheriff's office, the detectives. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. 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 So it's already after five. So we're not gonna be able to get any of them. So. Okay. I mean, oh yeah. You could always download it to a flash drive if that's possible, and then we could do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. I mean, I have an ancient computer at home. Okay. Uh, I'm not local. I'm down in Central Florida. Yeah. Okay. I, I kept it because you know right, everything right, right. else. You know. Well, and even on. if it came to the point where if you can download it and email it, I can do that as well and I can always upload it later that's not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can show you some clips just, just okay. so you can see the, right, right, the right. MO and everything. Gotcha. Right. Well, let's go, uh, okay, let's yeah. go have a chat Come with her. The officer then approached the suspect. Hi ma'am, I'm Officer Coyasso. Do you have your ID or driver's license with you today? If I may. So what do you do for Burlington? I'm a cashier. Gotcha. And this is Okay. This is a statement written by you. Okay. All right. So currently we're being detained for an investigation. So before I can ask you questions relating to that, I do have to read you Miranda rights. The officer read the suspect her Miranda rights, and she chose to speak to him. Okay. So my understanding is that you have taken some money while you're working as a cashier at the front. Can you tell me about that? Like, what, what's what's the purpose behind all this? I needed the money. Okay. You short on bills, or? My mom. Your mom? Yeah, she's sick. Like, she's got, like, cancer, like, really badly sick kind of stuff? How long has she been sick? For a while. Okay. She needs, you know, she has surgery, mm -hmm. getting medications. Right. Does she not have insurance or anything? No? Okay. So... Before we go into the other stuff, th there are programs out there to help, okay? A lot of your hospitals and medical facilities are going to have case workers that can potentially point you in the right direction for programs or even alternatives to insurance, right? Um, a lot of pharmaceutical companies, if you fall short on something, some of them are very well known to assist with payment plans or even potentially doing things for free, okay? The biggest thing for you and mom is you have to ask the right questions. Okay, with what you've got going on, I, I shouldn't be here having this conversation with you. I think we can all empathize with you. That, that's, that's a very serious thing to have to go through on your own. Okay, but there's help out there. This is the nicest cop ever. He treated her with dignity and respect. Ooh, what's a few? Because a few to me might be three or four, or it might be seven or eight to you, three or four. Okay, can you kind of tell me about how you proceeded with this? Like, what was, like, how did this happen? Like, how did you obtain this money? Oh, um, on the transaction, I would put it in, the numbers, but I wouldn't put the money in. Okay. Were you still giving, like, the customers their change yeah. and whatnot? Yeah. But you just put the money to the side and kept this for yourself? And this happened approximately four times? On the same day or different days? Mm -hmm. Different days. Okay. Were any of those, like, more than one on one day or just all spread across four different shifts? The woman was then placed under arrest and escorted to the police cruiser. Do you have any other questions for me they may have not answered as of yet? Sorry. Sincerely, I wish your mom well. Thanks. But I'll follow up with you if I don't get them tonight. I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Six five seven ten fifteen. Yeah, we'll worry about that some other time. Um, 
would it be an issue for her husband to come back later and grab her belongings, anything that's left here? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we, we can do that. Okay. Unless, if you want to take, I mean, we can grab it. The, the only issue is if it's perishable stuff, it goes to the jail, they're just going to throw it in the trash. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. It's just containers unless you can actually throw it away. It's okay. okay. I'm just going to go here to the right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Right. Hey, Mrs. Kahn. Yeah, and there's, there's a very good reason as to why. I won't tell you why, but I tell this to everybody. I'm not pointing fingers at you. I highly doubt it's the case with you especially, okay? But if there's anything on your person, inside your clothing, or anything when you go to the jail, even if it's just tobacco, if it goes into the jail, it's an additional charge for introduction of coffee. Okay, gotcha. Like I said, I tell it to everybody, okay? The woman was taken into custody and charged with grand theft. She was ultimately sentenced to nine months of probation. Do you think she had a good reason to steal money from her job? On January 8, 2023, officers responded to a minor fraud scheme at a local Burlington coat factory, where an employee chose to steal from her employer. Here's how it worked. The employee worked as a cashier during the day and would select various clothing items during her breaks. When she returned to the register, she would ring up the clothing as if making a legitimate purchase. However, just before marking the amount as paid, she would suspend the transaction, making it seem like the items were paid for. She also recruited other employees to take part in this fraud. When officers arrived, the manager explained exactly how the fraud worked. The suspect had recruited almost everyone on her entire shift to steal various clothing items and make the transactions look like they were paid for. She got away with this for nearly three weeks, but what she didn't realize was that loss prevention could see all the suspended transactions, making it easy to uncover their scheme. She was always the cashier. Like she was always giving them the stuff for free. Okay. You know, the, the other associates I haven't found any where they're picking her up. She's just she's at the cashier, so she's really she admitted to like three thousand dollars, which is about what I came up with. Um, so a minimum of three thousand dollars she allowed to leave the store by not properly ringing it. Um, but I, I put it on here. Like I kind of put this is her, so she's responsible for let's just say three grand. The other one, from what I can see on the transactions, 16 of that is what this social walked out with. And this one here is like a farmer or something she recently quit. Okay, so that's that's that. just their names. I just had, a, had all the other so associates' names. Guys, but that person you have prison here today, she was involved in all the transactions. She was involved in all, she was the cashier. So she was the cashier, so she was like letting the employee leave, leave with all those stuff? She would bring some of the stuff up, you know, it looks, so it looks, if it like looking, it looks like everything's getting rang, but then she, was, instead of cashing it out, they would hit suspend, so it just suspends the transaction, but she still gave them the stuff and they walked out, they never so, paid for it. But on this, this here, that's, every one of these are, I was taken or yep. was, none of that was paid for. Okay, that's why I just want to make sure. Yes, yeah, uh, it's, it's not start all over. Mm -hmm. Rules 3100. This is a hurt generic statement. Yeah, but it's not sworn to us. It's, no, 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 I didn't know. The officer then approached the suspect. I don't even know half of them people. I told it might was a mistake for some of them, but they're saying that the receipt receipt came out after they put their card there, and the receipt came out. I didn't know if I suspended or not. I just explained that to him. Some of them people I don't even know. Oh, explain! I don't understand what you mean by suspend. That's what I don't understand. What does that mean? So, like this one here has your name, right? Yes. So this was a transaction for thirteen items on the twentieth, right? So. And it says status suspended. What does that mean? The, the the transaction was suspended. Okay, was that a declined card or? Let me 
No, it just was, I just canceled the whole transaction. All right, so you can't, you suspended that transaction, right? So your, your end of the day count is not looking for that money because that transaction was suspended, correct? So we have a total of, uh, it's like, it's like $103. So did you allow the product to leave the store? The woman was finally placed under arrest and charged with grand theft, receiving a sentence of nine months of probation. To make matters worse, while on probation, she was charged with petty theft after being caught stealing again. Talk about a lesson learned. On April 29, 2024, at around 10.05 a.m., police officers responded to a report of shoplifting at Walgreens. The manager informed them that a man, later identified as 33-year-old Angel Lopez Sierra, had left the store carrying a large blue bag that seemed to be filled with stolen items, including air freshener, dog food, and t-shirts, amounting to approximately $332. Officers found him nearby with the items reported stolen from Walgreens. Here's what happened next. Exposing himself. Yeah, that's the one I put it on. Uh, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29, Food. What are you doing now? Do me a favor. Step over here. Oh, come on. Two seven. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going no, no, right, no. right here. Right here. Put yourself down. I'm going right now. I'm going right now. I'm going right now. I'm going right now. I'm going right now, sir. We have the good news. I didn't do nothing. I didn't ask you he what has, you did. He has the contents right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. What did I do? Yeah, you robbed the uh, the shop. No, I didn't, Bob. How about food? I just saw your uh, video. We have one male tattoo five. Oh, are you serious? Oh, one male tattoo five. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's food. Yeah, you got it. 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 Again, these people. Stop doing it. I didn't do nothing. Didn't, they have you on video. And you have the, 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 the stuff right there. So what are you talking about? Stop. Just stop. Don't sit there and lie. They have me on video? Yeah. You're going to go I into came, the store. I came in the store. Okay. Oh, this is, this is how this okay. me. Stop moving. Just calm down. Yeah, I know. Wait, wait, wait. I got, um. You got stuff in here, right? I what got, do you got in there? I got, uh, uh needles. Needles? Hey, caps or what? Got caps. Oh, you got you got Brolo, you got needles, you got frag pipe. I need a bag. Um, in my bag, there's this a bag. Here, here, get your bag. Here. Thank you. When the officers located Lopez Sierra, they found him in possession of the items reported stolen from Walgreens. He was also wearing a Walgreens T-shirt. They call us. No, Walgreens. So the ones you stole from are the ones that called us. Yeah. I got I got money. I don't need so to. So then pay for the. Stop making us arrest you. I, Stop. I, I'm not. I'm, don't. Yeah. Don't. Oh, man. Don't. Look what you guys are doing. Don't. Yeah, I'm throwing all your money on the floor because you got to steal stuff. Now yeah. I got to. You I have the money paid for it. I just, they paid for it, man. No. Who's they? Because the video showed you walking out with it. So please tell I, me who I, they walk, I, did you, Imaginary you friends? You saw me walking with the, with the bag, right? Right. Did you yeah, see me walk in with the bag? Okay, right? You walked in with a bag and you with walked in with a bag. You walked in, it's what this thing is. I right. walked in with a bag. Not, listen, yeah. not yeah. Not nobody's not buying it. We saw you, you have the contents, you match the description. That's it, we're done. Yeah, it's my first day working at Walgreens. No, it's an old trip. Really? Is that what we're going with? I was about to go work. I got my clothes right there. You got your Walgreens jacket, they don't. Maybe don't steal from the store you're going to work at. I'm not there. I was going to work over here. During the search, officers found three push rods, a small piece of Brillo, a glass cylindrical pipe commonly used to smoke controlled substances, a hypodermic needle, and a pink container with residue of a white powdery substance. They then proceeded to arrest him. Good. That's not my backpack. No, no. wouldn't be your backpack. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Uh, look, I got a, I got a, uh, a call. Uh, listen, listen, I got a bracelet for my knee. Look, I just came out of the hospital. All right, put, put your I, feet I, in the car. I, I, 
it's hard for me. It's hard, just because work I, on I got, I got it swollen. I can't bend it. My knee, okay. my, my knee, just me. Can you try to bend it? I, I, that's what I'm trying. I really to. don't want you to lay across the street uh, seat because then I can't put your seatbelt on. I, I don't want to see you. Just try to sit straight so I could actually put the seatbelt on I, you. I can't bend my my knee. I really can't bend my knee. You were work, walking just fine a minute ago. You I don't. Were, I yeah, you were like completely that, fine. I can't go like yeah. this. Okay, just put it inside the car. There you go. You're gonna. You, you're, it's already bent. Just put it forward. There we go. Okay. Hi. Hi. Right. Okay, just slide over so I can put your seatbelt on. So you're safe and sound. You guys do this to me, man. Just you sit straight. To me? Just sit straight. Man. Okay, I'm just gonna put the seatbelt on you. I'm, I'm, yeah, I just, I just, I moved. I moved, sir. I'm trying to get the seatbelt out from under you, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, why are you being so aggressive? I know it was aggressive, but I just want to put the seatbelt on you so don't, you don't hurt yourself. How is that being aggressive? Oh, I'm trying to hurt myself. Come on. Again, put the seatbelt on. Again, you can't hurt yourself. There we go. Can you change that? I'm trying to. The man was taken to Hoboken Police Headquarters and charged with shoplifting, possession of substances paraphernalia, and identity crime impersonation. He was then transported to the Hudson County Correctional Facility. In Alamogordo, New Mexico, an officer spotted two suspicious individuals while conducting a foot patrol at the local Walmart. He observed a male and female suspect placing a bottle of alcohol inside a purse. The officer quickly informed an asset protection agent, who began monitoring their activities using Walmart's advanced surveillance system. The suspects were then seen placing two more bottles of alcohol into a large open chip bag before heading through the self-checkout. Camera yeah, recording you, okay? started. I'm Officer Ferguson with Del Mogordo Police Department, all right? This is a manager with Walmart, okay? You guys have IDs on you? Yeah. You have an ID, ma'am? I'm sorry, the receipt? And what's inside the purse? It's my purse. I'm like, it's my purse. Because I saw you stick a bottle in there. I didn't even stick a bottle in there. I was like, okay. those bottles like right here on the besides the like, like those bottles right there. Can you there see your inside. ID? That's why I'm like, well, I have my food stamps. Like. I see your ID right there in your hand. Are those on there? Are those on there? No? Okay. Let's go ahead and head into this office right here, guys. Both of you. You too. Get your hands out of your pockets. No. Hey. No. Your purse? Okay. I'm going to seize it and apply for a warrant for it, okay? Let go. Let's go in here. Let's go in here. Come on. What do I do? Because you're with us. Let's go. Come on. You don't need to get arrested today, right? There's bottles in here, too. Yeah, that's right. And you don't have an ID on you? No. What's your first name? Chris. What's your last name? Huh? How do you spell that? A H I D L E Y. A H I D L E Y. You know your social security number? No. No? Can we stand by one now? Yeah. 134 PD, I have one by two by name and date of birth. I noticed you guys were out I'm, here. I'm sorry, hold on. And the second one is Chris. I noticed you guys were out here and there's stuff that they didn't pay for because they didn't have enough money. I would like to just pay for it. Well, Walmart doesn't work like that, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, so so who, are you related to them? Who are you in relation to them? Dave the, the male is my cousin. Okay, and the female? Uh, just as his girlfriend. Okay, and what's their names? Uh, his name is Gary. Is what? Gary. Gary what? A Hidley. Hidley, Gary, okay. All right, give us just a minute, okay? The officer then proceeded to place handcuffs on the woman and escorted her to the police cruiser. Okay. Let's go ahead and get her now, Rebecca. Rebecca, talk to you real quick out here. Okay, go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back, okay. okay? Let's go over this way. Okay, Rebecca, do you have anything on you that's going to poke, stick, or stab me? No. I barely got back in from Denver. I was um, I was in a case up there, and um, I was um, kidnapped from here to Denver. And that's why my face is kind of all jacked up, but I was kidnapped in Denver. And, I'm sorry to hear that. And I barely, the sheriff's department barely sent me back down here, and so that's one of the reason why I was gone. <laughs> yeah, go and have a seat for me. I'm okay? like, I had no choice, freaking, but yeah. I barely came back from Denver, like, maybe a week ago. The sheriff's department brought me in. But yeah, I was kidnapped, and that's why I have these scars on my face. It's because I was kidnapped. I'm sorry to hear that. 
She kept talking about her kidnapping. I'm not sure what shoplifting a bottle of vodka has to do with her being kidnapped in Denver. Got him. Uh, let me uh, get this out for you. Come out here. Thank you, Diaz. Hey, Rebecca, what do you want to do with the groceries in your basket? Uh, that guy was supposed to take it. Okay, give it to that other guy? Yeah. Okay. Officers handed her groceries and car keys over to her cousin and then took her to jail. She was charged with petty theft or shoplifting. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.